Genesis 13, I'm going to start reading in verse 1. It says, And Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him into the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle, and uh, in silver, and in gold. And he went on his journeys from the south, even to Bethel, unto, uh, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Hai, unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord, and Lot also which went with Abram had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them, that they, uh, that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle, and uh, the Canaanite and the Perizzite which uh, dwelleth in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between thy herdmen and, or excuse me, my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we are, or for we be brethren. Is not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right, or if thou wilt depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord. Uh, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest to Zoar. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. And Abram uh, dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And we're going to go ahead and stop. The, the passage that, that I read is a relatively familiar one. Abram and Lot are, are traveling together and God has, has led them to go and they're traveling together and, and because they're obeying God, God has blessed them tremendously. Their flocks are growing, they are, are successful, their families are growing, the amount of servants that they, uh, that they have is growing. What we started with talks about for both of them, their flocks and their silver and their gold and their, their herdmen having strife, which um, growing is great. I mean, having when your livelihood is flocks, your flock growing is a really good thing. When, you know, you have more silver and gold, that's a really good thing. Except, it means that traveling together becomes a lot harder when they're all growing. Uh, my, my family does a lot together. And one thing that we do each Memorial Day, we take a trip together down to Oregon to some of the places where, um, where we have some, some family buried. And when, when my brother and I were kids, it was just my parents and Bo and I, and that was really pretty easy. You know, just four people. That was really pretty easy. And we got a little bit older, and, um, and Kimberly started coming as well, which was still pretty easy. Five people isn't hard. And then a few years down the road, and now Lisa was coming. Six people, still not bad. It meant a bigger car, but pretty easy. Now we have kids introduced. And when we all get together, that's 11 people. Suddenly, everything gets more challenging. It requires bigger car, more... Yeah, more everything, more bathroom breaks, more food stop, or more planning for food stops and all that. It just, it, it challenges things a little bit more. And that's what Abram and, and Lot are facing, that there's just more challenges. Family is, is growing and their, their herds are flowing, are, are growing, excuse me, and suddenly traveling together wasn't working. And for them, it was more than just the logistics being difficult. Um, there are so many of them that the Bible puts it, the land can't handle them all on it at once. Which brings them to its decision time. Something has to change because this isn't working anymore. So, you know, what, what do we do? We can't stay together. Something has to happen. They decide they need to part ways. And Abram, Abram, I'm going to, I will warn you now, I'm going to accidentally say Abraham instead of Abram repeatedly in this message. No, I'm talking about the same person. Abram gives Lot the option of where he wants to go, which is where Lot makes his first mistake. This isn't the message, but it bears pointing out this morning. You look at verse, uh, verse 10 and 11. I am looking at 10 and 11 in the wrong chapter. 10 and 11, Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord, Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. It's time to choose and look at what Lot's determining factors are. They're determined off of his eyes. It starts with that Lot lifted up his eyes. And it looked good. 
Um, he made a, a major decision and he chose it simply off of what looked best to him. They are, are well-watered plains. Well, to, for a man who makes his living off of his flocks, well-watered is a big deal. You're not going to have to search for food or for your animals as much and those sorts of things. It's going to be plentiful, but more than just well-watered, it was plains rather than mountains. Um, I don't know if you've spent much time around mountains chasing animals or around animals. Chasing animals around flat ground is a whole lot easier than chasing animals around the mountains. Two totally different things. He chose in part off of his eyes, off of what looked best, off of um, what looked like it made the most sense for him. Which is what we do often. We make decisions in our lives based solely on what, what our eyes see. This looks like the best decision to us. Um, has the most opportunity for, for growth or whatever, so I'm going that way. He chose it also off of, I'm just going to put it this way, off of his past. If you look at verse 10, it says that it was like the garden and that it was like Egypt. It was like home. It was like where they left before God told them to go. The problem is, God had them go for a reason. This was, was a point for Lot... Um, in a way, for him to turn back without going back. For him to, to have something that was like what he had to leave without actually having to go back. Which again is something that we do often where we make decisions based off of our past rather than based off of where God is leading us. But I think both of those ways that, that he made the decisions kind of boil down to one last, and that is simply this, that he based his decision where he was going to go off of self. You look at verse, verse 11, the very beginning of it, then Lot chose him. And I know it goes, goes on from there, but I think you could very easily stop it right there because that's what his choice was. He chose him. He didn't consult God. He didn't pray about it. He didn't choose the one that he thought would spiritually benefit him or his family the most. He looked and made a decision based off of what self wanted. Based off of what, what he wanted. And again, that's something that we are, are often guilty of. A decision that, that has to be made and we choose what, what appeals to me. We choose what, what appeals to our flesh. Um... I, I know I've said this before. It's something that, that got brought back to my mind again relatively recently. That yeah, how often I've talked to people who want to make a move and I ask them about it and you know, ask them why they want to move and the answers I get are, are all pretty much in this area. That how much they like um, the area, how friendly the people are, the different attractions of the area and all those sorts of things. All the things that appeal to self. And there isn't anything wrong with that. I live in Puyallup, and I absolutely love the area of Puyallup. But then, often, you have to ask them, well, what about a church? Have you prayed about it? Is this where God wants you? And recently, this is why it's brought to my mind, because recently I asked someone that, and they actually um, had the nerve to say, well, I haven't prayed about it, because the area is so perfect, I'm worried if I prayed, God would tell me no. No joke, they, they actually told me that. They didn't want to risk the fact, the area was so much what they wanted, didn't want to risk the fact that God's going to tell them, no, I can't be there. And maybe not to that extreme, but we often make our decisions like that. Not consulting God, just going off of what self wants. Which is always a mistake, and it, it, it's never going to end well. Now, I say all of that to get where we're going to be focusing... Um, for the message this morning, and that's mainly going to be in verse 12 and 13. And Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent toward Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Lot not only went to the well-watered plains that he picked for self, but he moved into the cities of the plains. And then, one step more than that, he pitched his tent so he'd be looking at Sodom. Um, it's been, I don't know, four or five months now. I, I heard a, a preacher make this statement. It's been something that's really kind of stuck in, uh, in my mind and really convicted to myself. And it kind of is where um, this statement that he made, uh, I'll be honest, I have no idea what he preached after that because as soon as he preached that, God had started working me on this. But he made this statement. He said, the way you are leaning 
is the way you will fall. Now you hear that and first thought is, well, duh. You know, that, that seems pretty obvious. You know, if I, I thought about having um, my son come up here, Josh, but they're in junior church, so I wasn't going to pull him out of here. But if I had Josh come up here uh, this morning and lean as far as he could to the left and just keep leaning and leaning and leaning, eventually, unless you're incredibly flexible, you're going to fall over. And we all know that if you're leaning to the left, you aren't going to fall right. You're going to fall to your left. The way that you're leaning, I almost fell right there, tripped over my own feet. The way that you're leaning is the way that you're going to fall. It's, it's obvious, it's gravity in action, but this applies to more than just uh, physical. It's also true when it comes to spiritual. Amen. The way that you are, are leaning in your spiritual life is the way that you're going to fall, which brings me to a very simple question that I'm sure everyone can see coming. Which way are you leaning? Which way are you leaning? There, there are only one of two ways that you can lean, and we're going to look at, at those this morning. Um, the first is leaning toward the world. It's what Lot's doing here in verse 12. Abram dwelled in the, in the land of Canaan. Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent toward Sodom. He, he chose the direction he did based on what looked best to his eyes. He didn't, didn't choose, as I, I mentioned a moment ago, didn't choose what was best for his or his family's spiritual development, chose what looked best for his worldly success. And then he moves there and is watching a city that, that it very clearly says was wicked and sinners. And he wasn't pitched toward Sodom. I had someone, um, I think they were just trying to be argumentative, but I had someone propose the idea to me that, well, maybe he pitched his tent toward Sodom because he was trying to keep an eye on him. You know, if you have someone that you don't really trust, you keep an eye on him. Maybe, maybe that's what it was. Lot wasn't pitching his tent toward Sodom because he thought, those people are wicked, I need to keep my eye on them. <laughs> that's not what he was doing. He was watching them because he liked what he saw. He desired to be there. For, for the sake of the message, he was leaning. Mm -hmm. He was just leaning a little bit that direction. And what was the result? I'll, you can turn over there if you want to. I have it uh, written down here, Genesis 19.1. There came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet him, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. The, the passage uh, goes on. We see that Lot is, is living now in the city of Sodom. Just a few chapters later, he's gone from living in the plain, looking at Sodom, to now he's there. Sitting at the gate means that he held a place of respect, a place of authority in the city. He's now not just looking, not just living, he's a ruler of the city. A city that, that at one point he, he pitched his tent toward, he leaned a little bit toward, now he's, he's fallen. He's now intertwined with, with the wickedness of the city, and it all started with just a little lean. And then a little more. And then a little more, till finally, he had toppled over. And you know, it's no different for you and I. It's no different for us. If we are, are leaning toward the world, it's only a matter of time until we fall. Which way are you leaning? If you're leaning toward uh, things like, like immorality, just like Lot, it starts with, with just a little look. If you keep leaning, it's just a little thing. And it won't be too long until you're falling over. You've made a huge mess of things. I, that's what happened with David and Bathsheba. It started off with just a little lean from David. I mean, what, how it started wouldn't have seemed like much. But before he knew it, he had fallen completely over and had committed adultery and murder and made a huge mess of things. It's only a matter of time if you're leaning before you fall. If you're leaning toward, toward uh, things like missing church, it's only a matter of time before you fall. Just like everything else, it starts small. Starts with what seems like um, a good excuse not to be there. But you start letting those in, and you'll find that um, you keep having more good excuses or reasons in, in your mind not to be in church. Before you know it, you won't be there at all. Um, I have a good friend who, who is kind of going through that right now that I've been talking with quite a bit. And it started, uh, the odd part to me, he recognizes it. Because he was kind of the one, we were talking about it, and, and he was the one who was kind of saying this, that it started with, with, with Wednesdays, that one day after work he was just too tired to go to church. It had been a long day, he was tired, so he stayed home. And then 
Um, he says, now looking back on it, realize it became nearly every Wednesday that he would come home and it was just a long day. He was tired. And then it became one Sunday that, well, you know, I've worked a lot of extra hours this week. I'm going to spend some time with the family on Sunday. And then it started happening more frequently. And now at this point, he doesn't attend church at all. It's completely fallen with something that started seeming like just a little lean. But the way that you're leaning is the way that you'll fall. If you're leaning toward things like, like uh, spending time with the wrong people, it's, which is something that, that we have to be extremely careful of because um, we ought to be a witness, which to be a witness means you have to be around unsafe people. I mean, I can't, I can't be a witness to people if I segregate myself from anyone who is lost. That's not going to work. You can't possibly be a witness to people if you refuse to be around them. Um, and I honestly believe that... that the people we can be the best witness to are the ones that we build a relationship with. Um, those who it's more than just, you know, a stranger knocking on their door and go through a quick Romans road. That I, the Lord uses that. I'm not saying, saying that He doesn't. But, um, but the ones that we spend some time with, that we invest in their lives. Which is why my, uh, myself, I, I get together with, uh, with guys I go hunting with. And when I had my Jeep, I'd get together with guys with Jeeps to go Jeeping with. Most of my hunting, fishing, Jeeping friends um, that I have are lost. And I do that on purpose because spending that time with them, I can build a relationship and can be a witness. But when you're together with lost people all the time, you've got to be careful because while, yes, you can be an influence on them, they can be one on you. And it's a lot easier to go downhill than up. We found that out this week. It's a lot easier to go downhill than up. It's that same way with an influence. It's a whole lot easier to get that influence pulling down than that influence pulling up. I could go on and on with a, with a thousand different examples, but here is... Here is um, I could never cover everything. Now, I, can, I can see someone saying, well, he didn't mention my sin that I'm leaning toward, so I'm in the clear. But you're not. Um, and I know that because I've been there before when the preacher is preaching and I'm the entire time saying, please don't mention my sin, please don't mention my sin. I may not have mentioned it specifically, but this principle applies in every area. That if we are leaning toward the world, whether it's some, some sin or some unwise decision, if we're leaning toward the world, whatever it is, um, at some point, that's the way we're going to fall. Because you can only lean so far before you've lost your balance and you're over. That's kind of the um, negative side of it, I guess you could say. But it's not all negative because you can lean two different directions. You can lean toward the world and that brings all sorts of problems with it. But there is another option and that is leaning toward God. Look at verse 14 through uh, 14. I believe I'm going to read down um, all the way to the end of the chapter, verse 18. It says, And the Lord said unto Abram, after Lot was separated. So Lot has left. L God talking to Abram, Lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art northward and southward, and eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest, uh, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise. Walk in the land, uh, in the length of it and the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Then Abram removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar unto the Lord. Notice the difference in, in what Lot had done to decide where to go. He lifted his eyes and he saw what looked good to him and what Abram did. Lot makes his choice and Abram looks to God. He waits until God tells him, this is where I want you to go. The end of it, the very end of it, then Abram removed his tent and came and dwelt. Verse uh, 17, God's telling Abram, arise and walk in the land. Abram waited until God said, this is where I want you to go. Lot makes his, his choice and Abram looks to God in essence saying, God, where do you want me? And because of it, God gave him, as we saw in those verses, all that he saw and blessed him mightily. He leaned toward God, and because of it, that's the way he went. Now, um, think, about, think about this for a moment. If you're going to um, fall, or I'll, I'll word it this way, if you're going to go in one direction or another, doesn't it just 
Maybe this is too obvious. Doesn't it just make sense to want to go the way of God? I mean, it seems really obvious. I, I get that. But doesn't it just make sense? However, it must not be that obvious because we regularly don't. We regularly don't. Um, but if we are leaning toward being faithful to church, guess what? That's the way you're going to fall. I had someone a while back uh, tell me that they were trying to become more faithful in church, but they were having a hard time with it. And, and they literally asked me, what is the trick to being faithful in church? And I told them the trick is really simple. You want to be faithful in church, be in all the services? Here's the trick. Show up. Yeah. That's the trick to being faithful in church. You, you be there. You just decide when church is, I'm going to be there. And it won't take very long before it's more than just leaning that way, but it's automatic. Hey, it's church time. I'm going to be there. Amen. Um, my, myself, I know I uh, grew up in, in a family that church was al always priority, so it's pretty automatic for me. But there is never a question in my mind on Sunday where I'm going to be, on Wednesday night where I'm going to be. It's church. It's what happens on Sunday. That's what happens on Wednesday. Um, it's automatic. And if we start making it where, well, that's what we do, the trick to being faithful to church is I'm just going to be there when there's church, it doesn't take real long before it becomes really automatic that what's happening tomorrow, oh, tomorrow's Sunday, I'm going to be in church. And what's great about that, and this is nowhere in the notes at all, but we were mentioning being a witness a moment ago, what's great about that is while it doesn't take you long to figure that out, it doesn't take people around you long to figure that out either. Um... I had one particular job that the guys every single Friday would spend, uh, no, we, that job we work Saturdays. Every Saturday they would talk about what their plans were for Sunday. It wasn't but about three weeks of me working there before they stopped asking me what my plans were for Sunday. Because they had it figured out. It's Sunday, Caleb's going to be in church. They all had, you know, their different things they were going to do, but it became obvious, Caleb's going to be in church. Doesn't take a whole lot. If we're leaning that way, it'll be automatic. If you're leaning toward being a witness, it won't, it won't be long until you're falling that way. A person who, who learns to be a witness, how to give the plan of salvation, how to lead someone to the Lord, a person who, who thinks about wanting to be a soul winner and wanting to be a witness to those around them, and a person who, who actually looks for opportunities to be a witness to those around them, it won't be long before you just are, before it's who you are. That everywhere you go, that you are, that you are a witness and looking for opportunities. There was um, a guy when we lived in Astoria that that um, I think it could very easily be said being a soul winner is just who he was. He was a, a Filipino man. My dad knows who I'm who I'm talking about. Who everywhere he went was witnessing. Um, he and my dad would go fishing together, and, and my dad always came back telling us this, that they would go fishing together, and he would cast his pole out and then tell my dad, watch my pole, and he'd go up and down wherever they were fishing, witnessing to everyone around him. Um, by the time we left there, he was no longer allowed in the grocery stores because he would go around witnessing to everyone in the grocery store and stuffing tracks inside cereal bo boxes. Um, a witness was who he was. Which way... Are you leaning? Which way are you leaning? Here's the idea that I, I want to get across this morning. Um, you're leaning, you are leaning one of two ways. There really is no neutral position. Uh, my, my truck is a manual transmission. There are very few places in a manual transmission where it's actually flat enough that you can put it in neutral and not go one of two ways. You know, where that you're actually going to not move. If there is a, the slightest slope, you're either going forward or you're going backward. Either way, you're moving. And the same is true of this, that there really is no neutral position. You're either leaning toward the world or you're leaning toward God. It's just kind of all there is to it. The question would simply be, which way are you leaning? Honestly, ask yourself that question. Between, between you and God, no one else has to know, but, but honestly, ask yourself that question, which way am I leaning? And then if you're leaning toward the world, correct it. Uh, this last week, I, I went up and did uh, some, some plumbing work with Bo up in Anacortes, and we did um, a groundwork. And groundwork is the... For those who don't know, the part of plumbing underneath the dirt, digging up all the, the stuff and all that, um, under the cement slab. 
Uh, it was 10 bathrooms, so it was a whole lot of digging and work. But, but on the groundwork, there are some very important factors, and one of the most important factors is that every pipe coming up out of the ground is straight. It has to be straight up and down, because if it's not, then when you come later on and they have the cement slab there, it's too late to fix it. You, you have to jack hammer up all the concrete if you're going to fix it then. So we literally, every single pipe coming up, have to put a level on all the sides, make sure it's coming perfectly straight up and down. And if it's leaning, you don't just say, oh well, and walk away. You correct it. There's, there's something wrong, you know, just look at it and go, ah, you know, we'll deal with it later. No, you, you fix it. If you're leaning toward the world, don't just say, Oh well, and walk away. Um, I've heard people take the mindset of, well, leaning this way, that's just who I am. Don't do that. Correct it. Correct it. Recognize that, that this doesn't end well. And if this is the way I'm leaning, it's only a matter of time before I'm going to fall. And the other side of the spectrum is this. If you're leaning toward God, Go ahead and fall over. <laughs> Don't just look toward him. Don't just lean a little that way. Dive on in. Amen. Get serious about it. Amen. I'll end the message with the same question that I've asked over and over and over in this message. You're probably tired of hearing it, but which way are you leaning? Be honest with, with yourself this morning. Um, be honest with God this morning. Which way are you leaning? Let's pray.